Welcome back to the Overwatch Open. We're getting ready for Colorado Clutch versus Team Liquid. Uh, a lot riding, of course, in Colorado Clutch here. They're definitely the underdog team, but at the same time, uh, they're facing a Team Liquid who are starting to settle in, but maybe are still a little bit of an unknown quantity. They have been adding to their roster, and they have been posting better and better results lately, though. So uh, we're looking forward to Rafa as well. And it looks like the maps have now been decided. And we can see, I mean, obviously, James wanted to skip over that real quick. He, yep. I think he just wanted to get into the match really fast. Of course, he did just see Rafa play at QuakeCon, and that, that was a very, very exciting he, he's grand He's actually final, just gone so backstage to watch Rafa VODs. That's yeah. all he's done. I'm, I, I, wouldn't, I would not, uh, not disbelieve that. So <laughs> Nepal will be the first one, and uh, that's going to be interesting from the perspective that uh, we actually didn't see, uh, I think uh, so far, a capture point tonight. It's just been, I believe, the payloads that we've seen so far and so this means we're going to get to see a bit of Nepal. We we'll get to see a bit more of the kind of crazy action that's more a little bit more focused on that mechanical ability. So that's definitely going to be very nice whenever you're the underdog team because mm. you don't have to worry about uh, as much some of those. I mean, you don't have to go too hard into, you know, are we balancing our ults? How many ults do they have as much? You know, it's, it's, it's a little bit more forgiving in that sense. And the coordination is a little bit more forgiving. Well, you are also... I mean, countering that out with King's Row, and we've also got Temple of Anubis. So three different game modes <laughs> for this best of three. Uh, the guys are going to be doing their best, of course, to uh, try and mix things up as much as possible, take Team Liquid into unfamiliar territory. And I think this is uh, potentially a good map set for Colorado Clutch to be using here. They're going to have to bring their A game. It is not impossible for them to win this as well. I think Joshi put it uh, very right. I mean, at the end of the day, uh, Team Liquid beat Colorado Clutch at Agents Rising. Rafa was also playing in Agents Rising, but he didn't quite make it to top eight. He was playing with a, uh, a team of Quake pros as well. Uh, but... Colorado Clutch have some good mechanical skill, and I genuinely think they can take the fight to Team Liquid. They might need TL to have a little bit of a bad day. And we are starting off on the Shrine, so it's going to be interesting to see how the, uh, the compositions are going to be working out. And uh, right now, we're on AZK. Of course, some of you would know him from, from Counter-Strike, which is a background of his. And let's see how well he can do on the McCree. Of course, Counter-Strike is very mechanically demanding uh, uh, game, so this is going to be a nice... Uh, Nice roll for him to start things off with. Is oh, that's oh. that's a good start. Yeah, very good start. The initial pick off onto Tracer means that you're not really going to get those flanks that are very annoying and pick up your supports, especially on this point. Known basically for Tracer having a great time. Hamsford and Lumberjack both going down in quick succession as well. That's going to allow Team Liquid to take the point first. Ooh, and what hurts most actually about Calvin dying there uh, on Reaper is that it was a staggered kill. So he's going to be respawning five to seven seconds after the rest oh. of his team comes. Back. And we can also, you know, see that uh, Rafa's on that that Zarya, and I know that is definitely a favorite of a lot of Quakers. It's not quite a rocket launcher, but uh, right click is it's going to be somewhat <laughs> of a similar effect with the well with when you've got a hundred charge, right? Absolutely, you can blast people into space. Well, or off the edge of the map in this case, fingers crossed. We'll see. We're going to be moving in now with the next team fight. Louis getting an early kill off on Meza. So important uh, if you're able to pick off those tracers early. And actually, a really good illustration of that is Colorado Clutch get the first two kills. But ID coming back in saying, uh, excuse me, guys. I'm going to go ahead and sort this out. And he grabs a triple before Calvin finally takes care of him as well. Louis still alive and still on the point. Even with the Discord Orb, this tracer is going all over the place. But finally goes down, and Team Liquid are able to hold now at 55 percent yeah just wasting an extra few seconds always counts in a, in a game mode like this however liquid will maintain their positioning the thing going in the favor of clutch however is that they do have a lot of ultimates to work with but they do want to get the next engagement fairly quickly because the minstrel of liquid is not too far away from a counter sound barrier and that's exactly. the the only counter support ultimate that they're going to have to work with so in they go quite quickly azk is going to meet them with a quick dash forward and a flashbang and we get the transcendence to push clutch onto yeah. the point at the moment to start really contesting things and it does look like a lot of trouble here for liquid but they are giving some space for it but they have been beaten off the shrine so calvin picked off minstrel uh, immediately uh, in the early stages of that fight in fact he was the only pick off from the death blossom but minstrel had just gotten his sound barrier so that was an excellent pick uh, for clutch it meant that team liquid had to fall back to an extent, and uh, instead of opting to maybe feed some ultimate and get uh, a team fight that could be unfavorable to them, they just decided to pull back, save their remaining ultimates, and come in for a second round. So, uh, cool play coming up from Team Liquid. They've also got both support ultimates here. There comes a Graviton Surge, Pulse Bomb from Louis, not able to get the connections he was looking for. Hot for shots now with the Sound Barrier, trying to keep them alive on the point. Mesa now down for Team Liquid, but they are starting to get the individual kills in. 
Yeah, Trace coming in, but it does look to be favoring Clutch a little bit here and there, especially with Louis having uh, just free damage on pretty much every opponent. A nice knockdown coming in there for another free frag for Louis, and finally a flashbang from AZK. AZK is going to be the guy that's going to be keeping the check on the Tracer with the flashbangs to stop them running riot over the rest of his teammates. And Ooh. we are seeing a lot of headshots again. This guy's from Counter Strike is going to be very attuned to hitting those headshots. And he's just going to delay now to let his teammates get back on using that dead eye, and it's going to work out very well. We're going to see, of course, the soldier there from Dahang. He was previously on Zenyatta, so just wanted to nice. sprint back quickly. AZK there with a flashbang over the top of the Reinhardt shield, able to get a great kill there. ID also coming in with a double kill from Death Blossom in the middle of that, and uh, Lumberjack will be the last to fall. I have to point out, uh, during that engagement, it was just so slick from Team Liquid, basically wasting the transcendence of Lumberjack, or rather winning the team fight despite Colorado Clutch correctly staggering their support ultimate. So a very strong display of individual skill coming out of here from Team Liquid, able to mechanically pick apart Clutch in that last team fight especially. Oh yeah, absolutely, and, and that's, that could be a trend that we will continue to see rolling in, and it could be the edge that, you know, over, you know, the, the more minutes you play, the more kind of distance you see Liquid kind of taking over Clutch with that individual skill. We'll have to see how big it is and how big that distance is. Uh, will become as time goes on, but so uh, we are going to be moving into the Sanctum now. Let's see how this one goes for Liquid. Of course, that first engagement can always be a little bit tricky, and it's often quite uh, quite fun to see Tracer on this map. And uh, we did see Lou doing good work with it previously, but he's actually switched away f to McCree for this one. All right, that actually makes uh, these teams, I believe, a complete mirror. Oh, pardon me, no, Meza, of course, is going to be playing the Winston there. Oh, he also gets his head taken off very early on from Lumberjack. So again, the early pick going. Colorado clutches way. Uh, can they actually make this count? They're moving down the stairs. WGB actually getting very low. Might have been overextending ever so slightly, moving into AZK's line of fire. And he gets taken out from Rafa, paying the price there. A uh, little bit of an overextension. That's okay for now, but they need to stop the stem. And two additional kills to Team Liquid means that Clutch definitely have to fall back now. We get a bit of rubber banding there. Not sure what the issue is there. It looks like, oh, things are normalized. Looks like we're back here and away. And it does seem as though Liquid will be taking the point rather easily. And it is always interesting when you have a situation like uh, a map like this where you get the choice with your DPSs. Do you pick up the McCree or do you go My to the Tracer? We've seen amazing ready. work from Tracers because of the sheer amount of mobility that you get from this. Able to very quickly get onto the point from the, you know, either side. So we'll have to see uh, whether or not AZK can continue because he's been dominating so far. And we're going to get the, just everybody bunched up there. That's not a good look right there for Clutch. They're going to lose a bunch of members, and Liquid is starting to really gain that ultimate advantage that could carry them through to potentially 100 to 0, unless Clutch can somehow find a flip. This was really well executed by Team Liquid, guys. A lot of teams would be using two, three ultimates in that situation to get that team wipe and then reset and go, okay, let's do, let's go, you know, let's move on from this. Let's move ahead and try and win the next team fight. They basically only used Graviton Surge. Rafa was the only person person that used the ultimate there, uh, and Dahang saved his, AZK and Meza all have theirs available, and Colorado Clutch are going to have to go without basically being that productive and getting those team wipes in. AZK with the Deadeye managing to get through the shield, and he gets a pick up on Louie as well before Transcendence gets popped, and now we have all of the ultimates coming in onto the point. Colorado Clutch, they're trying their best to hold on, but against this unbelievable might from these ultimates, it's going to be very difficult, and they've still got Sound Barrier available. ID mopping up. Yeah, that's a very scary prospect, I've got to say. Uh, Liquid making it look pretty easy at the moment, but Clutch do have ultimates to work with. They have the Graviton Surge and the Sound Barrier. Those are you know, two very, very good ultimates to help get yourself either a lot of kills or help you get out of a bad position and into a good one uh, out of the Sound Barrier. So let's see how they go when they start to move around the side here, trying to find that engagement. We can see Rafa there on the point with that Zarya. He does not have a Graviton Surge. He's not too close to it either. It's going to be this uh, Death Blossom that could work out, but will the Sound Barrier be dropped in time to negate it. And here we go, Graviton Surge coming on in now. Louis getting a double kill. That's a great way to start things off with that Deadeye. And Calvin trying to follow up as well. He's continuing to do a lot of damage. He's not being targeted down right now. And that, I believe, is a character over the cliff as well. Zarya getting pushed off the edge to hang. Going to be moving with him. And Clutch do take their first decisive team fight while holding the point. They are up to 6%, but they're fighting against the 99 from Team Liquid. They have to hold this and bring it all the way.
And that's a great situation for Liquid because they didn't really spend anything in ultimates. They just tried to uh, last as long as they could to build up their meter. And look at their meters right now. Graviton Surge, Death Blossom, Sound Barrier, and a Dead Eye. That's all you need to split the switch right now on this point. Clutch are holding on to just two ultimates of their own. No support one for just the time being as the initiation goes in for Liquid. Can they coordinate it effectively? Calvin is just hu uh, hugging the walls right now, trying to be unknown to his enemies. And he's going to come through. That is a pretty decent Death Blossom at the start, but he just gets, it just whiffs at the End, and that's going to be Liquid taking full advantage with a multiple uh, kill situation. The follow-up just wasn't there, unfortunately. Team Liquid bringing this into overtime straight away, and they will be capping the point. So, Lumberjack actually moving on to Tracer towards the end there. I mean, it, Tracer is a viable pick on Sangu. You see teams doing it all the time, but you do need to be zipping around a lot and trying to get the flanks, and it's a lot harder to get a surprise flank on here when there's only two or three avenues of attack than, for example, on Shrine, where you can go to about a million different places. But combining, of course, with Graviton Surge, that Pulse Bomb is absolutely devastating, and if you get that combination out on the field, it's more or less an instant play of the game. So uh, They chose not to use it on this occasion, and a Team Liquid were just so focused, they were using far fewer ultimates to achieve their ambitions on the point. And each time Clutch came in, they had that one really good team fight. But prior to that, it feels like they were just using more ultimates than Team Liquid to achieve the same thing. Absolutely. Liquid had a very good con uh, ultimate management situation. And now we move on to the village. And we're going to see the uh, high ground uh, approach from both teams. Very standard opening now. Let's see who's going to be able to make the frags happen so far. Liquid getting the better of the situation. Clutch uh, pushed further and further into worse positioning as they lose player upon player. This is just sheer out scaling here. We saw the start, the approach, it was even. But for Liquid to come out so effectively, so far ahead in frags is pretty pretty disturbing for Clutch. So one thing to highlight there from Team Liquid, Harmony Orb from Dahang, followed by the bubble from Rafa onto ID, and the Reaper was literally in the middle of Colorado Clutch. You can't ignore him, and at the same time, he's shielded, you're, fielding Zarya, uh, you're feeding Zarya, and he's being healed. It's a really, really nice place to be, and it forces the entire team to try and kill him off. A oh, good couple of kills from Rafa there to start this, and Team Liquid are looking on course for yet another wipe. Only Rafa going down there, and that was incredibly strong and a statement of intent. They're saying, we're going to take this one 3-0, and there's nothing you can do about it. Yeah, and again, as I mentioned at the start, it was a spot to see Nepal first, whereas either, you know, is this, having the, the capture point like this, the cream of the hill like this, is that going to help Clutch, you know, kind of mitigate the difference, whereby maybe Liquid are better from a strategical sense and coordination sense, or is it going to hurt them? And so far, we're seeing that the skill of Liquid is out of this world. We've got it there, who has himself a Death Blossom as he gets his, himself wow. better position with the Ray Form, doesn't have to use it. His teammates are all over it as they try to focus him down. And it's just too easy once again, Clutch, unable to get the coordination in some of these fights to outplay Liquid. That is absolutely mad. Another team wipe, but without a single player going down for Team Liquid there. So uh, very, very good. And it does mean that basically both sides have three ultimates each. Clutch, they're not even able to die and build an ultimate advantage here. There comes, oh my god, the Graviton Surge to start things off. Liquid are basically playing a roulette with ways we actually want to kill Clutch as they move out here. They're getting up to 75%. Colorado Clutch do not have long at all to try and flip this and continue uh, and try and break this dominant streak on Nepal, but it's just not looking like they're going to be able to do it. It is definitely not looking. This is. I mean, this looks like the worst of all the points that we've seen so far in the village. The village does seem to be Liquid's village, and uh, we're going to get the Dead Eye there. Of course, the Sound Barrier is going to negate that. Really doing anything as far as kills is concerned. As the dive comes in from Clutch onto the point, and AZK again has so many teammates to just distract from him. Oh, very nice flashback there onto the Reinhardt, who is isolated away from the rest of his team, and that seems very much to be the story here for Clutch. As we have the overtime, but all the frags oh, are going the way of Liquid. The Kill tracker is all blue right now, and Clutch will lose 0 to 3. It's all about the liquid in uh, King of the Hill, it seems. That was that was just brutal. I mean, frankly, the team was coordinating really well, uh, but ID was in the kill feed so often, there was rarely a second in that game where ID wasn't killing somebody. Meza will be grabbing the play of the game here. I guess he was in the thick of Oh, goodness, don't be sat punched up. Oh, See there ya. goes Lumberjack. See you later. Um, I mean, Zenyatta can float. You'd think he'd be able to fly back up, right? It's actually a very good, good point. Uh, someone should look into that. I don't know, but that was uh, that was Maybe very one-sided. More tranquility for that.
Yeah, yeah, exactly. Additional tranquility required. And uh, I mean, they're going to need a lot more than just that if they want to turn this around. Team Liquid are looking very slick, very polished, and it's uh, incredibly difficult now for Clutch because they're not coming back on another day going, guys, let's reset. Let's take a look at what happened there. We'll scrim a little bit more and we'll come back and analyze and go in. Well, no, they've got about two minutes. Yeah, they just got completely wrecked there, and it does make you wonder. I mean, you know, going into you know the payload situations, is that actually going to help them a little bit more? I mean, again, this is the the distinct as uh, the distinct difference. Sorry, in skill sets that you get between these two types of game modes, whereby there's some more emphasis on some skills than others, and maybe they can make up for the lack in individual skill, which I think was quite clear there. Um, and we are moving into King's Row. Mm. Um, it was quite clear. I think they can maybe make it up on from a strategic sense, or maybe uh, competition, which is you know perhaps something that they're very used to running. That maybe is a little bit offbeat. You know, who knows? I'm trying to f I'm trying to find a way here to you know to see you know where the advantage could be, or if there is is even something for them to work with, or if they could are just across the board better, which is what we what we understand. It's very difficult in this situation for them. They came out on Nepal uh, playing not always the same, of course, but a similar composition to Team Liquid. They were trying, uh, they weren't really trying to flank too much. We didn't see too much of like tracer action, getting a couple of kills on the side or anything like that. But the early picks in those engagements really were where they were suffering. If you take a look at AZK or Meza or ID or even Rafa, all of those players were getting the initial one or two kills. And it's so difficult when you lose those one or two players to continue the rest of the fight, 6v5, 6v4 down. There were maybe one or two instances where Colorado Clutch actually got the first kill. I'm thinking notably on Shrine. But even when they did that and used more ultimates, there were more than one occasion where they used Transcendence or they used Sound Barrier and Team Liquid managed to wait it out. Maybe they lost one or two and still came back and won the team fight. So yeah. there are multiple areas in which Team Liquid were basically crawling all over Clutch there. They can't just fix one problem. They have to fix the whole suite. Yeah, that's, that's the problem. And, and one of the big issues they're going to run into is AZK. Obviously, we saw AZK's immense damage output. I would actually be surprised, considering we didn't see a single Tracer pick from him really there, um, I would be surprised if he doesn't keep uh, to the McCree. And if you've got somebody that's that impactful with a McCree and the team maybe is built around that style of, style of DPSing, as we see, you know, M uh, Envious with Taimu uh, yeah. oftentimes, then you need to be able to find a way to deal with that player. He can never be unchecked because the longer that he's able to get free shots off, because he's extra accurate or more so than a lot of top players that you'd find, you, you know, he's, you're going to have less uptime on your players because they're just getting damaged so quickly. So they need, they need a Genji to be working on that. They need some way to get at the back lines. But you know, oftentimes you can see in situations when across the board the individual skills higher that there's just too much trouble, and it, you know, with just the, the initial uh, tanks, the, you know, the Zarius and so on, and then you get a situation where you just can't get into that into the back line. You just can't get to that McCree, and then it's just it's just a slippery slope in that set in that uh, in that uh, scenario. So hopefully for Clutch they can find a good first attack and get an ultimate advantage, but it does seem unlikely. We'll see how Clutch are able to switch it up here as Team Liquid are fighting on the offense. Clutch, you can see a pretty normal looking composition. They have got Reinhardt and Azaria as their tanks here as Team Liquid dive straight on in. Some decent shield to start things off and WGB getting a kill and still managing to keep the shield up, which is good for them. ID picking off the opposing Reaper does mean that Louis is going to be building charge a lot less, which means it'll take longer for him to be able to sneak up top and get a critical death blossom for a team fight. But we are just going to reset for now and Clutch will be able to hold position. Yeah, and uh, once again, it's uh, for Liquid about building that ultimate, and we're going to go for the first attack here, and it's going to take a while for them to get those ultimates running, but Raph is on a lot of charge here with this, a lot of energy with this Saria, and he's doing a lot of damage. If he can take down this Reaper, that's going to be very, very nice, and indeed, he's going to get it, although the rest of his teammates are going to be causing uh, uh, some frags here as well, but it's a bit backwards and forwards here. Clutch are able to get some frags. They're actually able to put up a bit of a fight here. But we are seeing uh, Liquid actually having to fall back here and think twice about this one. But the, the Hang does have himself a Transcendence to work with, and uh, Meza's not too far off the Earth Shadow. So there's going to be a lot to work uh, with for Liquid. They just need to have a bit of a slower engage in the next, uh, next build up. A lot went well for them there. The Hang managed to get a double kill as well. They're building up a lot of ult, and it takes longer for Clutch to actually move back onto the point. But Transcendence after an Earth Shock coming in now. Are we going to see uh, that they don't actually don't get any kills off the back of that Earth Shadow, which is a little bit surprising? Calvin managing to get a solid kill off of Rafa and bear in mind guys they use a lot of ultimates to get to this situation hot for shots now uh, he's rejoining the fight but 
where were the kills that those ultimates allowed them to get? They are actually moving in now. Louis getting a double. Bao was really worried for a second. They had that transcendence. They had that earth shatter. And for a moment, we were looking at Clutch going, hang on a second, there's no, no kills being registered here. I, Team Liquid yeah. fell back quite well. I, I mean, I feel like uh, in that situation, uh, Liquid were a little bit too too quick. They were, just, they were one fire strike away from an Earth Shatter. The engagement Reinhardt didn't have that. He had to pop it in the middle of the fight. Either way, we're going to see one of the ultimates being used here by Clutch. It is a Graviton Surge. That's going to split up the offense quite nicely. Even though we don't see a lot of focus and damage in there, it's going to just split up the team well enough for Clutch to easily isolate them down with their number advantage. And yeah, I, I really, I really feel like Liquid were a little bit too fast in the previous engages, but that one they actually seemed to trouble Clutch enough that they used a lot of their ultimates, giving now Liquid an ultimate advantage. Sound Barrier plus Graviton. This is interesting. They're moving back, allowing Liquid to almost get onto the point before they fight back. And the reason they want to do this is because they don't want anyone coming through the hotel and getting that early pick off. Clutch are doing well in these team fights, but will that continue though? Here comes ID over the top after Graviton Surge. He gets the quad, and Colorado Clutch get completely wiped. Team Liquid have had enough, and with one minute remaining, it's a good amount of stall. Clutch, Fall, and Team Liquid are able to cap the first point. Indeed, and I have to say, I think Clutch did a fairly good job actually of holding off Liquid uh, for you know quite some time. But yeah, for sure. Now we're down to the streets phase, and uh, looks like uh, Calvin's actually going to miss the flashbang over the shield there, but that's okay. They are still just pressuring. Liquid slowing him down from pushing that payload all the way. Of course, the payload does still need to, to reach a more forward position. But uh, let's see if AZK can, can get something here. Oftentimes, you'll see Emma Cream maybe get a pick with the help of a teammate. But Clutch are all together at the moment. And uh, that's unlikely to happen at this stage. As it's going to be down to those ultimates. There's two apiece here. Uh, two Transcendences, a bunch of Dead Eyes, and an Earth Shadow from Meza. And here goes the first charge. Great initiation. That's huge. Very, very nice indeed. Transcend is now being popped by Team Liquid, but they are minus an AZK as things currently stand. And uh, Clutch have the ability to stagger their own as well. Lumberjack, though, has used his. And uh, right now, both teams just trying to fight over the payload and look for that positioning. ID moving over to the flank, not quite able to get the picks off, but Rafa switching over to Diva, managing to get a double kill there. And uh, that is going to give Team Liquid the momentum they need to continue through the street space. They were delayed for quite a lot, but now they're actually moving through with good pace. And Rafa's uh, plasma gun skills clearly coming into, into use there on D.Va with her little pistol. And, uh, well, making it function as a plasma gun. Yeah, it's uh, pretty fun to see. I actually thought for a while that this was uh, more DPS than Mercy's, but I'm proven wrong either way. Rafa back in the mech on D.Va. As we see, it getting into position, looking for the flank. And the dead eye not going to be doing too much from behind Reinhardt's shield there for Clutch. As oh, the die, die, die comes in, and the dominoes start to fall. Liquid are pushing in. <laughs> Unrelenting is this push, and this is looking quite scary at this point for Clutch. This is the ID show with supporting cast right now. AZK getting on the board, Rafa getting a kill or two as well, but it feels like Reaper has been the centerpiece of a lot of these initiations from Team Liquid, and ID has not failed to disappoint. The team, of course, rallying around him and allowing him, enabling him, and facilitating those kind of kills as he looks for uh, coming down from up above once again. Here comes Clutch, they're trying to go in and re-engage. Diva coming in with an ultimate though, and Rafa able to take out Hamsword with that. Teams are now swapping uh, in terms of kills, and that's actually okay for Team Liquid because they're able to get back into the fight relatively uh, relatively quickly. Not super quick, of course, because the spawns are changing. The closer the payload gets to the end, the more difficult that's going to be as we get the trickle defense. Clutch will be able to respawn and group together for one last hold, but they don't want to start trickling this early. Yeah, as you say, like that, that staggered, uh, staggered approach from the spawn is pretty problematic. They got, they will have time to regroup here. Well, oh, no. big push, but the Earth Shatter is going to do all the damage in a very sneaky positioning. We get the the graviton in, but because of that Earth Shatter, they can't do anything with it, and it's oh, everyone man. from Clutch going down. Liquid will make the payload reach the final destination, and that is perhaps what we expected. But that's a, and that's a very good time as well. Mezer, so unbelievably good as they were rushing out. Uh, as Transcendence was being cast, using the Earth Shatter to isolate two of the heroes from Clutch Team, and they will not be able to get that group hold. They wanted to avoid the trickle, absolutely correct. They needed to go out as a team and try and contest the point, absolutely correct. They were not counting on being Earth Shattered there. Yeah, that was that, that play, you know, potentially saved Liquid 
a, a good chunk of time there, 30 seconds to 60 seconds potentially, because you can see that Clutch had the ultimates to work with to make a really big team engagement that could very likely have gone in their favor with the Graviton Surge. So very nice preemptive play. Obviously, Liquid expecting it to happen, expecting it to come in as uh, they knew everybody was in the spawn. So, so good play from Liquid. And uh, 5.58 is the time to beat for Clutch. And I definitely think it's going to be a tough one for them. Uh, oh, wait. Right. Well, well, I, I, I'm going to boldly predict we swap off Torbjorn. <laughs> Team Liquid now. They're going to be coming in and uh, relatively stable in their lineup here. Nothing too out of the ordinary. No Anna. Colorado. Yeah. <laughs> Colorado Clutch now. Well, it looks like they're having a team pow wow. They're comparing sprays on the floor of King's Row. Whatever they do before a fight, I don't know. And 5.58 is a respectable time to be. It wasn't ultra fast because, guys, let's give props where it was due. Clutch did a fantastic job at holding Team Liquid at the first point. I mean, they came within a team fight of a hold there. And Team Liquid, okay, admittedly that last team fight was a little bit of a steamroller. Like, that looked very impressive from Team Liquid. But they stalled for a very long time. So 5.58, it's a beatable time, but Team Liquid are extremely strong. Let's see what Clutch have on point A. So Calvin may be looking for an, just a very initial shot from the high ground with uh, Widow before maybe switching off quickly. I can't imagine he'll stay on Widow for too long. We'll have to see uh, if that's the case. Looks like he's actually pushing forward with Widow a little bit. Maybe can he get a quick pick for his team? Still staying on it. And uh, this is one of the problems. Steve is going to find him, <laughs> start pushing him down and uh, applying that pressure. And ACK, meanwhile, is going to get two free frags as Widow's yet to really put in any value. And it's just one D.Va to, uh, to basically stop her from doing anything. And Liquid will very easily hold the point and build some nice meter at the same time. Yeah, Rafa doesn't even have to kill the Widowmaker at this point. He just has to get all up in her face and make sure that she cannot get any good snipes in. So that's exactly what he did. And now uh, we have Calvin on Hanzo, maybe looking for a uh, quick kill here or there. We'll see if he's actually able to get anything. Of course, Scatter Arrow can be pretty dangerous here, but it's less and less common, and it's very difficult for them to get those kills. And yeah, he gets picked off straight away by ID as well, as Team Liquid look on course to hold a second time. Oh, hang on a second. That was two quick kills from WGB. And Clutch now, they're going to try and do the turnabout here. There's some nice fire strikes there, and Louis going to get in on top of Zarya. But it does, and it does look like Zarya will die, but we get some trades oh coming man. back in. We've got some contestation here. It's kind of trapped in there. Oh dear, he's going to get a scatter arrow in think, the face. I think they might have got this. Calvin with the double kill on Hanzo. He's going for the triple as well. After that initial pick, we were wondering if he was going to switch off. Heck no. He's got his ultimate as well, and Clutch are faster than Team Liquid to the first point. Calvin with Hanzo, triple kill just before they take that. Pretty nifty stuff there by Clutch. Actually a much better time, I think, than Liquid on the first point, but they have the middle phase to go for now. And I mean, with the time that Liquid set, they do have to be quite hasty. Have to see how this uh, Dragon Strike comes into play, because we know that he's going to be setting it up right now. And it's, it's, to be honest, it's pretty sick on the streets phase. Yeah. The winding streets, it's going to be hard to dodge, and it should buy a lot of space. So the aspect in this street phase, extremely narrow. Oh, hang on a second, Transcendence popping out now for Team Liquid as they look to preserve uh, their ultimates here, because Meza still has his, then again, he's down. And wow, Team Liquid getting full wiped in this situation, and Clutch all of a sudden are waking up. They might end up having two and a half, three minutes to push at the end. And King's Row, like you correctly said, DDK, it's very narrow at this point. Ultimates like uh, Dragon Strike can actually be very, very <laughs> devastating here. Hanzo can actually do something. He can. Interesting. Come yeah, on. No, this is, this is, uh, this is Hanzo not on the PTR as well, where he's a little bit stronger. So pretty interesting to see this. And uh, right now, it's going to be another push coming in for Clutch. They do have the Graviton there, as we can see, it gets uh, popped down. And that's going to be the combination Graviton Dragon Strike. Don't see that every day these days. Hanzo not so uh, frequently picked in the current meta. And we are seeing Calvert absolutely shred, eviscerate one player after the next. And Liquid are being made to look the fools. Meta? What meta? Calvin at the moment is on fire. He managed to grab two with the Dragon Strike there to start things off. WGB also grabbing two, doing an incredibly good job. And that wasn't with Ultimate, by the way. He's going to be able to use that in the next fight. They now have just under three minutes to cap the final point against Team Liquid and take this best of three to the Temple of Anubis.
There is a deadline. There's a bunch of ultimates and the advantage here for Clutch to work with as they go to push in. We say Id going for the pick off there. Manages to find the Reinhardt. That will actually buy them a lot of time as the Reinhardt's very much needed to keep the push going forward safely as they will battle back the rest of, of uh, Clutch as they have to regroup here a little bit. But the payload is still moving forward and they're still on a really blinding time. Still, you know, just a little bit over two minutes now to go. And uh, Liquid, they, don't, they only have a Transcendence on the oh, hang. wow. And three ultimates, potentially a fourth coming out from Lumberjack very, very soon for Clutch. So they can actually make a big push here. They might not want to use all of them. Oh, that was an excellent Earth Shatter to start things off. And there's the Dragon Strike off the back of it. Louis and Lumberjack getting kills. Uh, we don't actually have them on the board for Calvin this time around, but they caused Team Liquid to scatter. And everyone but ID, no, scratch that. Make that him as well. Get back to the drawing board. Clutch still have Transcendence available. And... Uh, Team Liquid are very close to trickling in here. This is very impressive from Colorado Clutch. One and a half minutes to go. Yeah, absolutely bizarre turn of events as we'll see the last stretch here. Claims with good time here by Clutch. Frag after frag made. This is too much of an advantage here to battle against for Liquid despite being so close with the respawn point. And it seemed just destined after that Hanzo swap. Oh, oh, oh! And Team Liquid are overcome on King's Row. Colorado Clutch. Not a lot of people saw that one coming. And Hanzo with Calvin. I mean, this guy showing us that this hero is absolutely not out with the dishwater right now. He played a phenomenal game here and basically lit up the kill feed with Hanzo. Yeah, very surprising turn of events. That means that we'll actually be going to, well, potentially, we might be seeing a third map. They can keep this pace going because, I mean, that suddenly looked out of nowhere to be incredibly dominant. And it's not often you're going to see a Hanzo switch and then a team like Liquid, who so, well, well, so obviously were crushing them previously, like, Oh, uh, we can't deal with this. <laughs> we can't do I mean, as you said, I mean, Hanzo with his Dragon Strike, you can find loads of good spots there, but he was actually just saving Dragon Strike for the combination with the Earth Shadow. It didn't often even make a difference. You were talking a lot about how we actually going to be uh, tinkering around with our strategy or our team composition to see if we can beat Team he, Liquid. He tried there? Widow first. It's like, well, this, uh, this, that, was, that was his first <laughs> best idea before going to Hanzo. And, that, and, and it worked out really, really well for him. I think the first time he came up, he got picked off immediately, I believe it was by ID, and we were going, okay, is he going to switch off Hanzo to something else? Oh, no. He picked Hanzo, and he stayed all the way. That was absolutely fantastic. And uh, now we're going to be moving to... Well, less charted territory. It's not unknown territory, but Temple of Anubis, definitely not the most popular uh, map. It's not the most played. So we'll see what happens there. Guys, the score is one all. We'll be going to a quick break. And when we come back, Temple of Anubis to decide who moves on here between Colorado Clutch and Team Liquid. Text my heart.
Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to map number three of this best of three. Colorado Clutch taking the game to Team Liquid, winning out on King's Row with some really cool Hanzo play coming out from Calvin. But this is a different ball game altogether. We're going to have three different gameplay formats on three maps. And whoever happens to be most versatile and is able to adapt here will walk home the winners. And it's a very odd map to find yourself on a decider when you just, in Liquid's position, had a weird, weird upset loss on King's Row, where a Hanzo pick was was ultimately where you lost the grip of the game. And it wasn't just one fight. It was four or five consecutive fights where it just looked perfect from Clutch, and Liquid just couldn't quite scrap together a composed effort to flip the tables. Now, moving into the start of this one, we will see Clutch on the offense and Liquid on the defense here. And uh, this can sometimes be a very long affair on a map like this, on map, a map like Anubis. Well, we're moving on through now. Calvin, once again, is going to be playing Hanzo here and uh, continuing off the momentum they got on King's Row. Let's see if that can continue. Lumberjack on Ana as well. So uh, a couple of interesting picks, but Meza getting the first hit off and uh, he will be playing. Wow, we've got Rodog and Soldier76 from ID here from Team Liquid. So both teams playing compositions here that we might not necessarily see every day as things stand. Yeah, and that first pick from Meza actually slowed things down for Clutch a little bit because he took down the McCree. And you know, once you lose McCree, you lose a lot of DPS. It's hard to really get the push going onto the, onto the capture point. So you don't want to just throw an attack in there where you just give away free ultimates. So they wait, they regroup, and here is the effort. The second attack. Will they be able to hold now as they push on to the point? They start to contest, and Liquid are wrapped around them. AZK on the tracer this time, and Louis still alive with that McCree, but not for long. Surely Winston's going to electrocute him, but still, there are players to wipe out on this, this uh, capture point, and that is what Liquid are getting to now. Moving on very slowly behind the Reinhardt shield, but also very methodically as well. Earthshatter is going to take out Hamsword there. And, uh, well, he manages to pick up ID in the process. Transcendence now on the part of Liquid as they look to defend this point. There are three down for Clutch. They will have to reset. And uh, Team Liquid, I mean, it's an uncomfortable position allowing the enemy to get all the way on the point there, but they do successfully defend it, and they can now uh, know they have the ultimate advantage as well. That was really, really good in terms of damage dealt. Yeah, and that wasn't for naught as well. They did get one pip on the, uh, the of the three pips that was required to take the point. A nice push here. That's very, very unexpected there for Meza, who goes down immediately. That's a very, very good way to start an initiation there for Clutch. They have ultimates to work with Lumberjack can, uh, 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 with Ana can nano boost the Zarya, and that's exactly what's going to happen there as the Graviton Surge comes in, and all the damage is found. All the frags are found. It's going to go down after a single kill, uh, just wiping Ana out, but that is, that's going to be enough. Looks like uh, Clutch is going to be able to take this first point very rapidly indeed. And that was uh, pretty uh, pretty decent from Clutch, and more importantly, they're able to get some ultimates up on the board for the next fight as well. Uh, so Calvin will be able to use uh, that Death Blossom. Meza has actually switched on to May for the defense on point B. It's not exactly overwhelming, though, in terms of ultimate, because AZK has got Pulse Bomb almost available to him as well, and they are building up towards that Transcendence. But nevertheless, having the momentum from the first point can be useful in a lot of occasions. We'll see if Clutch can close this out quickly. Yeah, and Calvin's going to get himself in the back there. And this could be problematic as he comes in. He's still got that Death Blossom available. The May Wall will slow down the rest of his teammates from getting more forward positions and just staggering them a little bit. And he's going to have to fall back here. Just, just causing all the harassment here. And just Anna's in the mix as well with the Reinhardt. We've got uh, plays being made all over the place here, but there is still AZK with that Pulse Bomb. And the Transcendence will be popped by the Hang there of Liquid with that Zenyatta to keep the sustain going here, to keep Liquid in the fight. And what a fight it is. AZK continuing to deal damage. This is looking good right now for Liquid. That was a very, very sustained fight there. And uh, I think Meza in the back was actually constantly uh, freezing and slowing his enemies down as well. Very important for them to keep that longevity on the point. And Liquid, ultimately, they're able to respawn faster. They're able to uh, build that support faster. And they win that fight with more ultimates as well. There is, though, we have actually got Hot for Shots. He's going to be able to come out with Sound Barrier in the next engagement if need be. And Lumberjack will soon have uh, Nano Boost. So presumably could be used here on WGB. Louis has moved on to Genji as well. So we'll see what they can do here. But when they're flagging, they're going with the shield as well. WGB is doing a good job of keeping his team behind that. But they can't afford that to happen. Team Liquid getting the first four and sending Clutch back to the drawing board.
It's quite an interesting setup as well we see from Liquid where they, the only tank they have is Rafa on the defense here and uh, of course uh, we just see uh, AZK switching away from Tracer to McCree which makes a lot of sense um, when you know, you're know you on the defense and you're on this final point there's not a lot of flanking that you can as easily do get much more DPS out of uh, out of AZK's McCree but just Saria as your tank that's that's an interesting choice and Ooh, oh man that blossom is money there from it that is fantastic everyone's dead it costs an ultimate and it was a fast first take, so I think Clutch is going to feel okay about that. That's fine, yeah. I mean, just one one ultimate for all of that. That is rather painful indeed. And uh, Team Liquid will be able to preserve their charge on everything else, moving into the next team fight. Four minutes and 20 seconds remaining now for Clutch as they move on down. This is... Uh, they don't want the time to be bleeding away here. Having two minutes left at the end of this is going to be rough. They need to do something, and they need to make sure they get those pickoffs. WGB has done a fantastic discipline job here on Reinhardt, but they need the DPS and the pick to follow it up, and here we go. Sound Barrier coming out initially from Clutch. They're going to try and bring this forward as much as they can. WGB getting frozen, but he's not going to get killed just yet. Transcendence now on the point from Team Liquid to start things off, and that is going to be very useful because that is after the Sound Barrier has completed. That gives them the momentum. The first pick is gone. In the way of Clutch, Louie could turn this around with a Dragon Blade, but it has to be pretty good. Never mind, he's not going to need it. Four picks, Colorado Clutch are going to be able to do this, and that means the Team Liquid are going to have to struggle coming straight out of spawn to try and pick this off. And now we use the Dragon Blade with the Graviton Surge, and Louie, at the moment, he's getting the job done. Yeah, this is looking great right now for Clutch. They are just wiping everybody out of the spawn. Very, uh, very surprising and very explosive movement from the completely caught Liquid off guard. All the good picks at once. AZK went down immediately and it allowed for this beautiful situation where Clutch are just decimating the stragglers coming in off the spawn repeatedly. Although they are delaying it, it does seem at this point to be inevitable. There's so many left alive here for Clutch and they will nail it. Clutch there will be able to take themselves that final point. That was great actually from Minstrel at the end. There have been situations in the past where Lucio's wall riding like that do buy enough time for three or four members to pop out from the spawn at the same time. And that could actually be the difference between a capture and Team Liquid able to come out and basically team wipe them again and force Colorado Clutch into an even more uh, dire situation. So uh, really well played. It didn't work out for him that time, but what Minstrel was trying to do there was really good. And you know, I'm no Anubis expert, I must say, but the, the composition did look a little bit funky there from uh, from Liquid. And I can't wait to hear, you know, what's the, I, I'm not sure if we have ZP or Joshi on the analyst, uh, as an analyst oh, later. Oh, we've got Joshi coming on later, Joshi I think, coming yeah. on later, so it'll be interesting to see what his take is on that as he sits in the green room. But uh, either way, we'll see uh, what is much more of a standard setup here for Liquid as they look to move on to the attack. We see, of course, the Zarya, the Zenyata, the Lucio, the Genji on Rafa, and that's something that we've been excited to see. And, and also, by the way, for those of you that aren't familiar with Quake, of course, we're very well... Uh, uh, the uh, Cypher Genji of Anox is very well known in Europe, and many players consider him to be one of the best uh, Cyphers in the world. Uh, Rafa, uh, Cypher, sorry, was Rafa is one of his main rivals. So many grand finals went between Rafa and Cypher in Quake. So it's only fitting that they're both you know, adept Genji players. Well, <laughs> some of those Genji players are just so great to watch. An absolute joy. And uh, <laughs> Lumberjack showing us uh, a little bit of a golden weaponry on Mercy there. Looking very, very suave indeed. Colorado Clutch have three minutes left on their time bank as they look to defend from Team Liquid here. Having that May on that final point, just to touch on what you were talking about, the composition. We have seen May uh, on some of these two CP maps. I'm thinking Hanamura as well. We've seen her twice there, I believe, where basically teams are trying to split each other on the point so that they can basically go 6v3 and then 6v3 rather than have to fight those team fights. Obviously, the more unfair an advantage you can get, the better. And the walls and the stalling time for May as well, when you just have to get those capture points, is incredibly valuable. Yeah, and uh, it's quite cool to see the Mercy, because again, it's not super common, and at least from what we've seen in Europe. And now we're going to see the first push be made by Liquid. Rafa's in position, as it's a very, very defensive setup here from Clutch all the way back, and it's going to be just all about this uh, slobber knocker of a fight right on the point. Rafa's just causing so much annoyance and trouble. That's exactly what you want out of a Genji, as now Meza has the space to go with Winston, leaping in with a shield, and now Rafa comes back in with that Genji. And this seems like it's just a very easy wipe. And, you know, Clutch, they played very far back, and now Rafa and the rest of Liquid, they look to take ex additional advantages as they push for more kills. Getting the first point in, in a fantastic time there for Team Liquid. Now, 
They have about five minutes before they actually go below the time remaining for Clutch. So if they have, uh, if they're able to keep the momentum going here, and they have actually got additional uh, for build available, AZ he getting someone with the pulse bomb very early on. That's the Lucio going down. Not good news because both supports are not down for Colorado Clutch. Uh, do we actually have any response? Calvin managing to get the pick off there on Rafa, and this is looking. Uh, a little bit scrappy, I have to say. Clutch allowing both their supports to go down very quickly. Okay, Tracer zipping in with the Pulse Bomb was good, but where was the follow-up from Team Liquid? They're actually getting reset right now, and that could be a little bit frustrating because AZK really wanted more from that. Yeah, and Liquid, they got a lot of time to uh, to go for you know second chances here as they move forwards onto this point. They do have a few ultimates to deal with, but no, uh, no support ultimate just yet. The sound barrier is pretty close there for Hot for Shots, as uh, Calvin's just in a nice position there, raining down damage. Pretty unchecked at the moment. You would expect Rafa to maybe try to get up there, but Rafa will be eliminated by excellent uh, Reinhardt play there from WGP. And uh, Calvin's just going to go for the wow. follow-up. So really, really nice deflection there. A deflection where by Clutch did not have to really expend all that much in the way of resources, because Liquid made that a little bit too easy for them in their initial approach. But Liquid equally bought up, uh, bought up a bunch of ultimates there too. That's exactly what they're trying to do here, DDK. They, they just need to uh, get a lot of ultimates for the next fight. My they were losing that team it. fight, but they just wanted to be as productive as possible with it. Look, they've got four out of six ultimates. Minstrel is about to have Sound Barrier, and AZK is getting reasonably close to Pulse Bomb as well. So they're going to have close to six ultimates as they move in here. ID coming in with the Graviton Surge now on top of the point, trying to get those kills. Rafa, though, he goes down before he can actually use Dragon Blade. Oh, and Minstrel Sound Barrier not quite able to get there in time, the first three kills coming out for Clutch, and Liquid have used two of their ultimates, but for Nord, they still have the rest of them available, but that fight did not go as planned. Yeah, they, they have to get the return on the Dragon Blade there. Of course, Hots for Shots does have himself a sound barrier, but that is going to be very disappointing. That said, it's very good also at that point that they didn't decide to, like, that the communication wasn't uh, poor insofar as they didn't, they understood there once Rafa went down straight away that they're like, okay, cut our losses, Graviton Surge is gone, that's fine. Time for the next attack, let's conserve what we have and bring it in, and that's what they're doing. They're bringing it in right now onto the point as Rafa uses that Dragon Blade to pick off the supports as Zenyatta goes down, and that's going to be very painful. It's just Louis left now with an ultimate, that's going to be the Death Blossom, and he will take down three there. Wow. Rafa out of position on that one, but very low also, and it's looking pretty good for the hold here for Clutch. It did look like it was a very bad uh, initial engagement as Lick went in with so many ultimates and advantage, but Clutch still managed to hold. Clutch now are doing a good job. Team Liquid, I feel like that was uh, that was possibly one of their best opportunities there with so many ultimates available against Clutch. If you take a look at the percentage charges, it's not looking very healthy for Team Liquid at all. And uh, they still have two minutes before they actually need to match the time from Clutch. And they, of course, they, kills, uh, they still can cap the point a little bit later on as well. But I can't help but feel like there was a big opportunity for them to go into this three minutes up on the time bank and they weren't able to pull it off. Yeah, they're looking really good right now. We see AZK whipping the uh, flashback, and he's going to get pinned. And that is going to be a very crushed McCree. And now it's just frag after frag. I mean, it's, it is like a, a, stack of, well, a stack of playing cards. And you pull out the one right at the bottom, and everything falls down, a house of cards even. And as it tumbles down, Liquid are left back to the drawing board. And as you said, when they in, in, initiated that engagement, that attack, they had very, very, very low ultimate meters. So in reality, they're just thinking, how can we waste ultimates of our opposition and build ultimates for ourselves for our next engagement? They didn't do the best job ever in sustaining the battle, so they could build ultimates, but they do have a Graviton, and maybe that's enough. I mean, Calvin here has just been so good in the defense. We have the now engagement with the Graviton Surge to start things off, and actually Calvin getting picked off very early on. A lot of contribution there from ID. We have Transcendence from Loverjack to try and keep the rest of the team alive, but it is only four people at the moment. Hot for Shots coming in with his ultimate, but he's basically only sound barrying himself, and Team Liquid have an opportunity here. They possibly had a bigger one before, but it doesn't matter. This is the one they're looking to take now. Graviton Surge countering and coming back now. Minstrel, though, has hit his own ultimate available, and that is going to allow them to keep this longevity on the point. We are so close for it to be capped, and it's actually really close between them. It's going to get within 30 seconds, just about, and they move on now. They should be able to clean this up. The rest of them are actually moving back, and WGB getting a pretty crucial kill here. Can Clutch really do this? It looks like they're managing to actually push themselves wow. back in there. And especially with a full charge Zarya and so many men in advantage, you actually expect Liquid to have a really solid chance there, and they don't actually make it happen. That's the second time now that Team Liquid were really close to capping and weren't quite able to pull it off at the last second. 
Uh, Clutch, they did not have a good start to that engagement at all, but uh, they, they got the pickoffs, especially when coming back. WGB able to keep his shield up and getting a crucial kill as well. And Team Liquid gets sent back to the drawing board one more time. They're coming in from the right-hand side now. Can they make something happen? They are officially slower than Colorado Clutch as things stand. And uh, we'll see if they're able to make the difference. This, by the way, is to determine who moves on in the bracket. Double kill once again for Calvin, who switched on to Tracer this time around. He picks up a triple as well. And Clutch, at the moment, are absolutely owning up the defense here on Anubis. It's very awesome that that is the case, considering the close call that they had. Because one of the situations uh, that happened when Liquid put themselves in such a good uh, situation to take them to take that point was they set up a, a very nice graviton where they got two kills immediately, almost. And Lumberjack actually had uh, for Clutch a transcendence, but he was out of so out of position he couldn't negate oh, it. No. Oh no! Oh, but the stun comes in. Azk with the very masterful flashbang to make it work right there, and looks like the push will come in. All right, we're moving in one more time, and that that could end up being crucial. I mean, Louis wanted to make that work and get those picks off very early on in that engagement, and now Meza picking up a double as well. ID coming on in. Once again, Team Liquid getting some big picks off on Clutch, but they only have three people on the point right now. They have to make this happen with what they've got. AZK moving on in, and yes, they just about managed to do so. One minute, 43 seconds. That's going to get boosted back up to two minutes. And now we see, can Team Liquid do with two minutes what Colorado Clutch can do with three? And honestly, I find it very difficult to to call as well, uh, just generally due to the the most kind of uh, unusual compositions as to what I'm used to uh, from Liquid that we saw initially there, and uh, the nature of an Ubers. So, I mean, Clutch have to be, you know, feeling pretty confident in how they are playing right now, and uh, they, that they won't have to fill in a position where they have to change anything, especially going in with the time advantage too. So, looking forward to seeing how this one plays out initially. It's always difficult to uh, do, uh, to basically try and defend for the entire thing. You always see uh, a good example of this was Team Liquid with, uh, I want to say, between five and six minutes remaining. They had all of the ults on point B against Clutch, and they weren't able to make that happen. But they were able to win a fight where they had fewer ultimates available as well. It's very difficult for Clutch to consistently defend and defend the same way and make sure they get the same picks off and be in the correct position every single time. So Team Liquid just kept knocking on that door, and they were able to complete the round. But they are doing so with one minute less on the clock. And oh no, Raph has left the game. He needs to get back in here. He's rejoined. I think we're going to be okay. But with only two minutes on the clock, every single second counts right now. And he does manage to get in and switch onto the Winston. And one of the worrying things uh, previously is that Clutch gave up the first point almost immediately. Uh, and, and they didn't have a very forward defense. And okay. ID! All right then. He manages to get himself a triple on the Junkrat. What? That, I was about to say, hang on a second, even on the Winston, uh, how quickly are Rafa going to be able to get here? But actually around the corner, able to use that double mind combo uh, with an awful lot of damage. You get a triple kill off the bat. And ID for Liquid there doing a tremendous job to start things off. They're going to attempt to hold Colorado Clutch without even capturing the first point and then cap it themselves. That is their fastest way to win at this point in time. Let's see if they can do it. Clutch moving straight on past them, though. And they're standing on the point before Liquid can even get a solid team engage. Yeah, the mix-up here from it isn't going to pay off in the long term. As uh, oh, this is a great engagement. There's so much room to splash with against multiple opponents. As really clutch need to play some mind super right now against it. As he just continues to get the damage in here with Chakra, and it is going to be his teammates just popping them as they uh, go into mid air, and it's like shooting clay pigeons there for Liquid as they clean up the push. They're now down to a minute and 50 seconds. So uh, clutch now. Well, officially on less time than Liquid, but of course they will have the opportunity as well. Let's see what happens here. They need to move on through, and uh, I ta basically take this point before the time elapses. Uh, they will be able to take the first point if they actually get overtime, for instance, but not if Team Liquid keep playing like this. ID, oh, with the rim tire, he's looking for the kills. He's into the room, and nobody actually picks off the tire. It wasn't quite fast enough. He gets a double. AZG coming in with the cleanup duty as well, and everyone's trying to run as quickly as they can, but in leaving the room, they also leave behind their lives. That is another full wipe for Team Liquid, and they are now starting to build a big ult advantage as well. The funny thing is actually that uh, this game might end up, um, some, some of the footnotes might end up being MV, an MVP Hanzo and an MVP Junkrat at this rate in this series <laughs> yeah. with Liquid and uh, 
Uh, Clutch are going to be a little bit worried, but they do have a lot of ultimates to save their skin at the moment. But that said, the Hang also has himself a transcendence to try to negate uh, some of what is going to be worked with for Clutch. And here, com here comes the push. All right, we're moving in now, and uh, Clutch will actually managing to uh, fall straight into IE's trap there, but he won't get the kills he was looking for. Transcendence has come down. Calvin, though, in the back line, basically dueling with AZK to see who can actually get more in the form of damage done. He gets taken down from Louis, and uh, both sides now trading kills all over the place in terms of mobility on the point. We have Tracers, we have Winston's, we have uh, all sorts moving in and out. Hamsort standing very stubbornly on the point right now. They need to make this happen. 10 seconds left here for Colorado Clutch. Yeah, looking absolutely fantastic right now as finally they've managed to actually lock it down. Just in the nick of time, perhaps. We do have still contestation there being made by a few players trickling in there for the likes of Liquid. But it does seem like Clutch are going to get this one. Oh, they wanted the hold. They were looking for it. It doesn't look like they're going to quite get that. So that does mean that we are playing for three results here. Don't cap point one, Clutch will win. Cap point one, potentially a draw. And cap, of course, point B and Team Liquid will be able to win here. So still all to play for going on to the second half of Anubis. And it's quite hard to predict as well, considering all the, the mix-ups we're seeing in uh, hero usage. And also the, the funny thing is that they're deciding, you know what, we're going to mix it up in this way. And we feel very, very confident that in a very in a highly, you know, highly clutch situation, that this is going to work for us in the case of the junk rat, let's say. And I'm, I mean, of course, you know, junk rat is, has very, very often been used on Anubis on the first point. It's not necessarily anything new, but it's uh, it's something that would work immensely well there. And it seemed as though Clutch really weren't expecting it, and they got caught off guard massively. Mm, and this is very, very tense at the moment. We have uh, basically one minute and 59 seconds for them to come over here and cap. So uh, a lot of pressure riding on Team Liquid right now, but they are a team that thrives under pressure. It's not, a, I mean, you look at players like Rafa and you go, hey, you're under pressure, so what? Still able to perform at his best regardless uh, of what the situation is. So we will see if Team Liquid are able to come back and take this. A huge, fantastic fight coming out so far from Clutch. Uh, first on King's Row, very impressive there, and now on the Temple of Anubis as well. Yeah, Rafa doesn't really feel pressure, it just makes him play better. And we're going to see him on the Genji once again, as they try to go for the initial push. And once again, we see a very, very defensive setup here, all the way back onto the point there for Clutch, as they just, just, just hold the high ground there, forced to drop down onto the point as the contestation is created by Liquid. Rafa will climb his way around, find himself a, a nice, juicy, squishy support to eviscerate, and that's going to be Lumberjack, not long for this world, as Rafa will get uh, targeted oh, down wow. by the Winston, but the Discord and Rafa's finesse will be enough to deal with that. And uh, Rafa at the moment on a little bit of a tear. He's looking, oh, for McCree as well. If he's able to get him, Discord over on Yes, Calvin goes down. Such a key player for Clutch and Team Liquid. They are doing an awful lot in terms of momentum here because it looks like they're one and dunning the first point. This is important because take a look at the ultimate charge. They've already got Dragon Blade available, no surprise, because Rafa did tremendously there. They're reasonably close to Sound Barrier. They're reasonably close to Transcendence. And uh, this momentum could actually mean they take the second point very quickly. They don't have a lot of time, though, to do it. 45 seconds to see if Team Liquid can do this. And yeah, they hold to go for a switch here because they know it's basically on the next, next attack. This Dragon Blade attack has to work out. Rafa will swipe down two oh, players. Man. He's going to get it done right there, but his teammates have to follow up. They have to hold the trickle offense if they want to try to secure it here. And everybody's going down so easily. They are melting to the offense of Liquid right now as they rally themselves in front of the spawn points. And this is looking absolutely glorious right now for Liquid. Clutch are fighting for their lives here. This best of three match could end up being decided right here and Right now, if Team Liquid are able to take this, they will be able to win the series. If Colorado Clutch successfully defend, then we will be going to a King of the Hill best of three to decide. Oh my God, AZK over the top. Team Liquid have done it. That was incredible. And what a series we had here between Liquid and Colorado Clutch. Yeah, I was not expecting them to just get it done there. And I do love the composure as well. After they get that first point, they say, all right, let's get some switches on the characters. We have a lot of ultimate beta. We know, uh, just as you pointed out, and you know, we know that this next attack, 
where we have the ultimate advantage. If we don't get it there, it's not happening. And they made it count with a very nice composed push. Rafa did, again, what he had to do. He had to be clutch. He had to make the Dragon Blade get those first two kills. And his teammates were very, very happy with that. And they secured it from there. That was a joyous best of three to watch. It came down to the last couple of seconds on the third map. Clutch showing us an incredible performance right there. And uh, I guess uh, we should probably have a quick discussion about that to start off with as James and Joshy join us back on the desk. Joshy, you were expecting... Uh, That's maybe my job. Oh, that's your job. Joshy, you were expecting... Yeah, you were expecting... <laughs> what were you saying? Yeah. Yeah. Continue. So, James, you're going to ask Joshy, yeah. and you're going to say he was expecting Team Liquid to take this from Colorado Clutch, but maybe not quite in that fashion. So, you were expecting Team Liquid to take this from Colorado Clutch. I was. But maybe not in that fashion. No, definitely not. All the way in the <laughs> third map there, at the very, very end, and everything on Nepal went firmly Liquid's way, everything on King Row went firmly in Clutch's way, and then Anubis was just a barn burner, as we say in America. Is that a, is that a British one? Barn burner? We don't have barns. We no have barns. sheds. What do you have? Sheds. Oh, Sh shed, shed burner. Total not shed burner. Uh, we, have shed. Anubis. <laughs> we, have, we have sheds, but we have man sheds as well. We have all your man it's, stuff. You know, ah, you've got your tools. I don't really make where do you put the horses, necessarily. James? Horses. Stables? Outside. We've got the man shed now. They're, they're outside the shed, because the shed is not a man shed. <laughs> anyway, back to the game. That was quite a slobber knocker. Bit of a rocky Ivan Drago situation there. Yes. I thought Clutch were going to do it. But uh, Liquid too strong on the third point, but so much to talk about. Yeah, unbelievable. That last two minutes, uh, they were able to get A and B with that AZK Death Blossom ceiling. Or actually, that was Louis Death Blossom there that we just saw. But AZK, absolutely the hero there at the very end, killing all three of the clutch uh, defenders there, really just sealing the deal for Liquid, avoiding what would have actually been a best of three King of the Hill map as a tiebreaker if they had, in fact, been stopped at B. Oh. So unfortunately for us, we don't get to see even more craziness. But uh, yeah, Liquid getting the job done. Crazy stuff at the end. AZK from the beginning, though, as well, with the early headshots on the first map. And uh, IDD, I think, throughout the entire match, just with the, with the shotties. Most multi-kills in a match, I think. Just tons of triples, and, and yeah. everything went well every single tons time. Tons of triples. I liked how on Sanctum as well, he was when, once, when they had the point capped, he was basically lurking in that kind of side side hall mm -hmm. on the point as well. So they just had him, as soon as people tried to cap it, just came out with the shotguns. Really strong stuff there. And then uh, I think it was on, on Village Jorosar, the protection of IDD. I think he had uh, the, the Zarya ball on him and an orb as well, health orb. Exactly. It's just, when you're coming in like that and you are a Reaper right in the enemy, you're in the middle of five people. They can't really ignore you. They want to pick you off quickly. Harmony orb and Zarya bubble on him. There's not a lot you can do in that situation, planting yourself in the middle of that enemy. He seemed to have a lot of clutch plays there. And uh, I, I have to give a shout out to him for Junkrat on Anubis. Excellent Just when point. Rafa disconnected and we were wondering, can he actually get back into the fight in time? That might be why he switched over to Winston so quickly. But that triple at the beginning sort of calmed Liquid's nerves down and they were able to keep going. In the On the second map as well, King's Row, um, something we also saw on the third map from uh, Liquid was they have these, they, they kind of use the uh, speed boost to surge onto a point. They, they tried it at the beginning, but there was a good defense there from Clutch as we saw. But, but it's a common tactic. We saw it as well, jumping over the wall. They just try and get on the point and cause as much bedlam as possible. Mm -hmm. Try and get behind the enemy defenses. You know, you can set up your trenches and so on, but if they're behind you, your trenches are no good. It's uh, it it the positioning there when you're actually able to get behind someone can be good if you get like the perfect engagement and everyone is able to contribute at the same time. But when you can't do that and when the other team are able to swarm over you like that, like it happened there, it's just very difficult for you to sort of climb back out of that situation within the same team fight and try and keep contesting without actually resetting. And uh, I, th I think they were just caught a little bit by surprise as well, maybe by the Hanzo pick. But then subsequently, you have to give credit where it's due. Calvin was also just so strong there on King's Row. Mm -hmm. I was going to say, how about that, Hanzo? I mean, there, there's so much going on that you, it's, it's uh, easy to forget all the things that were happening. We had a soldier at the beginning, but the Hanzo was putting in massive work as well. I, it's interesting. The Hanzo is kind of an analog for McCree. In this case, they used him instead of McCree uh, for Calvin, who's a very strong McCree player typically and actually did play him a bit on the uh, Nepal first map. But Hanzo on King's Row, some of the longest sight lines in the game. That's why Farah actually used to be so popular there. And you actually see Hanzo on King's Row point A attack quite frequently because he can loop around and s attack from so far back behind the safety of his tanks and supports. This time around, Calvin hit enough shots to definitely pay off on Hanzo and had no reason to switch off. He just m mowed right through them. Well, we've got our Republic of Gamers incredible play of the game. Dan, what are you expecting here? There, were a lot of there was a lot of action on this. Oh, this is a hard one to call, actually. 
I kind of want to see Junkrat just because we never see Junkrat and we just see an excellent yeah. 3k which kind of blew up uh, from ID there that just blew up uh, the, the initial offense uh, there and got Liquid really going. Uh, but it is going to be seemingly a drop down because there were a lot of oh, these Death yeah, Blossoms we as well. So it's, it's, we're always good for a Death Blossom. This was pretty nice. See you later. Yeah, even with uh, everyone at full health, it was just such a perfect setup. The tanks rushed forward enough to stall them in place. ID picking the perfect moment to drop down. Four kills there just with the Death Blossom. So ID showing us how it's done on Reaper. One of the best Reapers uh, in North American scene, at least, for sure. Well, if you had a different opinion on what the play of the game should have been, then let us know. You can tweet hashtag OWOpen. The Twitter account is Overwatch Open. And of course, if you're looking for information, it is Overwatch Open. Dot com. Coming up next, we're going to have uh, Fnatic versus Liquid, I believe. So uh, we, we'll be breaking that one down after the break. See you here shortly.